107.9 WXRS, Vernon, New Jersey. Welcome to the What Paul Wants to Hear featuring Geechee Boy Show. We'd like to thank and welcome our faithful listeners, which at this point are possibly creeping into the double digits. <laughs> so for your entertainment pleasure, we will bring you the winery dogs. <laughs>
Are we back? From where? Take two. <laughs> That's, yeah. Well, if you heard take one, folks. <laughs> no, we had, to, we had to delete take one because it's not appropriate for some ears out there. And because we deleted, um, this isn't live. That, that's right. Uh, but then again, half the time, before I have a couple of cups of coffee, neither am I. Right. All right. We open up tonight's show. That was with the winery dogs. Um, we're, man, they can rock. That's really good stuff. I and don't know anything about them. Could you tell me about them? I don't really want to. Oh, okay. Then don't. As I, as I tell the kids out there, if you don't know, look it up. It's Mike Portnoy. Um, and uh, I'm going to draw blanks on people's names. The, the bass player from uh, Mr. Big. And I'm just going to yeah. draw blanks. Um, but went and saw them um, maybe a year and a half, two years ago, and they were really good. They were yeah. really good live. And uh, and his yeah. name's going to come to me. So in the middle of the show, I'm going to yell out a name, and it's going to be that guy. So you're not going to teach anybody about music? You're going to make them Google it and, and find it for themselves? Well, as my mother would tell me when I say how to spell something, she'd say, look it up in the dictionary. That's right. And my answer was, how do I look it up if I don't know how to spell it? Or my mom would say, go play in traffic. <laughs> That explains your bulldog face. That's right. You must have caught a couple. All right, so we're going to get into this show now. We're going to do from Roger Waters' second solo album um, from 1987. We're going to do the title track of Radio Chaos, which is Radio Chaos. Um, He's a musical genius, one of the best ever, but his political ideals uh, have caused me to nickname him amongst myself as Massengill. Um, but anyway, this is uh, Radio Chaos by Roger Waters, which I saw at Madison Square Garden, and his band was really good. Paul Carrick of Squeeze and Ace was one of his singers, and he was the keyboard player, and he opened the show all by himself, sitting at the, on the stage with a grand piano doing money, and then it went into the Radio Chaos thing. It was, it was really good. It was religious. No, it wasn't. It was just a good concert. It was a good concert. Yeah. Well, let's turn it over to If Mr. it was Rock. religious, I wouldn't go because Sundays I watch football. <laughs> You're so confused today, aren't you, Paul? Today? Yes. Yeah. Here's Roger Waters. Cool. Another confused person. This is KAOS. You and I are listening to Chaos in Los Angeles. Let's go to the telephones now and take a request. Yeah. <laughs>
Uh, that's a song called Radio Waves. You're listening to Chaos in Los Angeles. And we've got Billy on the line. Funky. That, that guy can play, man. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, Billy Preston, he, he started out his career as being uh, like a backing musician with like Little Richard, Sam Cooke, Ray Charles. Um, so before he got, you know, his own solo thing going, he was, he played, he's got a co rating on um, uh, with the Beatles. Um, right. And uh, he wrote, co wrote You Are So Beautiful that Joe Cocker sang. Um, Hey, do you think do you think the most famous thing he did was uh, with with Joe Conker? Uh, Try with a little help of my friends. What he played on that that live? No, I think you know he was. I think that's what made him famous, he, he right? Was, he, well, he no, he was like they started to consider him like the sixth Beatle at one point because he was playing on their. Stuff yeah, he was always him. playing with him. And he's got he's got um he's uh the only musician credited on a Beatles hit other than a Beatle, and it was for Get Back. Well, that's pretty cool. And then he toured with the Stones. I think he was like on Exile on Main Street, Goat's Head Soup, those albums, which are some of their better ones. I hate to ask this, but is he dead? Uh, yeah. Oh, that's he, too bad. Yeah, two, 2006. Really? Yeah. Well, rest in peace. He, he could still probably play in that coffin, right? 
it would have to be like one of those key tars because I don't think it could fit a piano in there. No, the, the coffin key guitar. The coffin key tar. Maybe it looks like a kiss coffin key tar. Man, he's gonna—he's making it famous, don't, man. Don't say that because because Gene will try to sell that. That's right. The kiss coffin key tar. Oh, it's gonna, it's, that's going to get out, man. That's going to get out, and, and, and he's going to steal well, your idea. Well, if the eight people listen to this t- show, if they know how to get in touch with Gene Simmons, we could utilize you for other things, not that. You said we're in double digits early on. I said maybe. Oh, uh, okay. And that's so only if you and I are listening to the show. <laughs> and we have a good meal. That makes us a double, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of doubles, this next doubles. song is called Doctor, Doctor, and it's by UFO, which is they were one of those English bands. They were part of that... Uh, the new wave of British heavy metal that came out like before it really kind of got the whole metal thing going again in in, in, the, in the 70s and uh, they were doing okay they had a couple albums and then they decided to pull Michael Shanker out of the Scorpions and then he joined the band and they started actually getting um I don't want to say hits because they are metal hits or hard rock hits which are never that big anyway but this is a uh, um, UFO doing Dr. Doctor and Michael Shanker on lead guitar
what an abrupt ending. Um, what happened there? I don't know. <laughs> George Martin fell asleep it's at like the wheel. <laughs> Crash. Good thing for them, the Beatles had air brakes. Did Did you ever see that movie, um, Across the Universe? It's where, I did not. No, it's pretty. It's pretty cool uh, for what it is, and they really utilized Beatles songs in it well. And that particular song, it's not the Beatles doing it; it's the the actors in the movie that actually sing the songs. Right. But that was pretty cool scene in the movie. It's um like induction into the military as a kid's gonna go up to Vietnam and it's Uncle Sam. I want you. It was it was. It was but it was like very psychedelic too. Yeah, and very it was pretty intense. Really. Yeah, you know, all the poking and prodding and blah blah blah. But it was they did a good job with it. That's cool. Yeah, Beatles. And it's heavy. Cause she's so heavy. Cause she's so heavy. <laughs> Not in a good way, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it might be a good way. I mean, that's heavy, man. <laughs> that's heavy. You know, we should bring back that phrase, right? What do you think? I think people are too politically correct and sensitive and we get smacked. We would. It's a, but th- but that was like such a great like term. Like, that's so heavy, man. Like Nito? Well, Nino is not that cool. How about the cat's pajamas? <laughs> <laughs> no, let's stick with heavy, man. Dude, that, that's heavy. Uh, get on the mic and say that's, that's heavy. Oh man, that's some heavy tunes you got cooking over there. So All right. On, on 107.9 WXRS in Vernon, New Jersey, we're going to get out of the heaviness and get into the dirtiness. And we're going to go right into John Lee Hooker, man who they don't even know how old he was when he died because there's like six different records of his birth. So he was like 99 or 95 when he died. Can I say it's, this song? It's, it's a Delta Blues, you know, from down in Mississippi. This is the dirty old stuff. Dirty ground hog. Dirty ground hog. John Lee Hooker. Cool. <laughs> Dirty ground hog Been rooting round my back door Low down door Dirty ground hog Rooting round my back door And if I catch him rooting he won't root down no more. Give me some toad frog hip. Mix it all up together. Bet you my bottom dollar. Gonna kill that dirty ground hog. He ain't gonna root at my back door no more. Kill that hog. Wanna kill that hog. 
but your mind bottom dollar. He won't rule. He won't rule around around my door no more. You know he won't rule. First place, I don't support the team. I can't take direction, and my socks are never clean. Teachers dated me, my parents hated me. I was always in a fight, cause I can't do nothing right. Every day I fight a war against a mirror. I can't take the person staring back at me. I'm a hazard to my. I love her. Yeah, I, I, I really like that song, Don't Let Me Get Me. No, did I you mean, hear what I said? I said I love her. I love Pink. She's she's She should have been what mine, but she's not because <laughs> she's on the other side of the coast. <laughs> I see you more as an Ethel Merman type. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> what? Ethel, Ethel, Ethel Merman. God. Bless America. <laughs> if you go to Yankee games, that's a seventh inning stretch. Ethel Merman. What, what was the other thing that she did? I don't know. I'm not oh. an Ethel Merman fan. Oh, I, I, I am an Ethel Merman. That's the one. That's that's the one I read that could have been for me. What, Ethel Merman? Yeah. yeah. Or, or how about Rosemary Clooney? <laughs> like like when she's in a Poseidon adventure and dives down, she saves everybody, dives in the water because she was the champion swimmer yeah. like 200 pounds ago. And then she goes, she does, she saves everyone's life and then has a heart attack. You are so mean. <laughs> but that's why I like you, Paul. I'm not mean. It was in the script. It's in the movie. You could rent it and watch it. 
Yeah, we, we should change the name of this uh, show to "What Paul Wants to Say" <laughs> instead of "What Paul Wants to Hear." It's the same thing. It's like I'm saying I'm saying what I want to say by playing music I want to hear, and that's what people want to hear, right? Well, I don't know if they want to hear this next one, but they're going to. This yes. is our this is our uh, feature set, one of our feature sets we do every show, and this is our um, cover set where um, it's just somebody doing somebody else's tunage. Yeah, that's what's called the cover. Exactly, <laughs> like, a, like a car cover. <laughs> that's what my T-shirts are going to be soon if I don't start losing weight. But that's a whole other <laughs> issue. Um, so this is a, a very important band in their time. Uh, this is Sushi and the Banshees, um, and this is their rendition of the Beatles' Dear Prudence.
Van Halen, um, doing a little Frank Sinatra cover, um, David Lee. Can I be bold? Yeah. I'm going to be bold. I'm going to say David Lee Roth was Van Halen. No. I know you... you, you, you said this before. He was not. It, it, it was, it's, you know, I know somebody like, people like Sammy Hagar, you know, and I, and, and I do too, but I... There was a personality to Van Halen, and that was David Lee Roth. That's he, why. He, that's he, why it was. He was the front man, kind of the clown in front. Um, I, mean, I didn't Eddie, think he was a clown. Eddie Van Halen was Van Halen. I think when they first started out, they could have had my second grade teacher, Mrs. Rocco, who was like eight hundred years old, singing to that band, and with Eddie's guitar playing, it wouldn't have mattered. It's just that everybody got used and was acquainted to the band through David Lee Roth. They sold more albums with Sammy. I'm not saying I like this Sammy stuff better, but be, a, because they kept going and thrived, David wasn't. A good band has personality, right, Paul? A good per, like you cannot tell me it, it, there's there's no such thing as a dull rock band like that. It's like boring. Death. Well, it, it, it depends what you want to call rock because there are boring bands. There are boring bands. Yes. Mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said it. I didn't. I was just I was kind of waiting for you to hang yourself on that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice shout out, right? Hi, we're a boring white band of <laughs> old white guys in our fifties, but we think we rock. That's right. Our wives think we go to a, a, a bowling league every every <laughs> week, but we're really down in the studio recording albums that no one <laughs> will ever buy. And the only time they'll get on the radio is if I play, we them play on them. this radio show. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but it's fun. It's something to do. Right. Keeps you in your your boys together and keeps us out of jail. Well, that's always a plus. Yeah. And, and, and not without trying over the years from what I've no, understood. That's right. Firearms discharging and all kinds of stuff. I think these guys were like the who just not famous because they caused <laughs> as much destruction. <laughs> right. That's right. All right. So we're going to go into a uh, song from the second Def Leppard album. It's actually the second song on the second side. And I know that because when this album came out, I was at a party and there was certain levels of uh, mind altering going on, and we pretty much played only three songs all night. One of them was the number of the beats by Iron Maiden, and then it was the song before this one, that, and then this one, and this song is called Lady Strange, and this goes out to those strange people from that one night in Mast Hope, Pennsylvania in 1983, Lady Strange.
This might be on 107.9 WXRS in Vernon, New Jersey, where you will get a segue of early Def Leppard, which was more towards the metal vein than they became, into a Jerry Garcia song. Yeah, I, I would I would agree. They don't do that anywhere else. I wasn't. I really wasn't paying attention to what you were saying because it wasn't that important, and it, it didn't really sound that interesting. <laughs> it really wasn't. <laughs> But you know, on that album, though, Jerry Garcia played every album, every um, instrument except the drums. Really? Mm-hmm. I I did I did Didn't not know, know that. Multi talented musician. Oh, uh, he was. I, I I saw them at Giant Stadium. I it was. I think it was one of one of his last shows. I yeah. was with my cousin. Yeah, I was at that Andrew. show with you. <laughs> I was, and and he flashed his badge and he got us up stage and we were right in front of the stage. And I remember turning around and I remember the moment and I I looked up and it was the old Giant Stadium. Yes. 
and and the entire stadium was wa- it was, it was wavering and it was like it was and I was not on mind altering drugs but it was waving because people were running you know moving around this the, the whole arena or the state the, the whole, yeah, stadium the, the whole place is bouncing and dancing it's like oh a, my it's like a God. wave it's a true tempest in a teapot I, I i honestly it was it was unbelievable and it was pretty cool i was right in front of the stage so he got us and then he got us backstage and then we then we got thrown out well you would have got thrown out for something else anyway. So yeah, for, eventually. Be, being backstage is a good reason to get thrown out. Whatever would have transpired later probably wouldn't have been. So I guess it worked to your advantage. It sure did. Well, to your advantage, we will go to the New Jersey set that we do every show. And we're going to play a band that um, Geechee might have a little bit to do with. Um, this song is by a band called Our Marvelous Lives. And it is called screwed cool tried to run from myself my feet were wired to the ground we screwed before we hit the ground Oh, 
All right, that second song was by a band that played New Jersey quite a bit in the 80s, um, going into the 90s, I suppose. And uh, every once in a while, I understand they're still around doing things here and there, more out towards Pennsylvania. But that band was called UUU, and hey, that Paul. was their song called Turn Along Way. But the thing about UUU um, is I probably wouldn't know about them. I mean, I may have gone and seen them anyway just because I used to go out all the time. But I was going to school in New York at the Institute of Audio Research. And one of the guys that was going to school there at the same time was this guy, Doug. And he and I and two other guys, we'd get together and jam once in a while. And uh, that was his band, UUU. And from what I understand, every once in a while, they still get together and play. That's cool. And I like that fake ending, too. Yeah, that was good. That, it, that's very cool. I, I, I like it. It was very, it was, very it original. Was, it was like the coyote falling off the cliff and then hitting bottom. Ping, ping. Our Marvelous Lives. Uh, that, that song, Screwed. Yeah. That, that's, that was, off the, that's off the bucket. That's off the bucket. It was also featured on an independent film. I'm going to put a shout out to my friend uh, Mike Matthews. Mike Matthews, actually, he did go to DBT, but got thrown out. But And if you met him, you, you would know why. Listen, I did my best to get thrown out of DBT. It didn't happen, probably because at one time my father was paying tuition for three of us to go there at the it, same time, and he didn't want to lose money from us. And the Matthews boys, Jim Matthews, uh, and they were all in the independent film. It was about you know the, this guy going going to jail, and as they carted him off to jail, they played Screwed. So do you get it? What, was it an autobiographical film? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Th- this is what we're gonna they're gonna play for us when we get carted off to jail. Oh, I thought it was maybe one of the Matthews stories. <laughs> no. No, they're they're out of jail now. <laughs> well, because you know how it was with the DBT. It's either either you did okay, right. or you just were off the planet. That's right. You know, good good guys, good movie, good uh, good film. Uh, put a shout out to them. And uh, good tunes. That's right. The so, Jersey, right? Yeah. So we're gonna come out of our special sets, and we're gonna go into uh, uh, recorded live on Long Island um, in Nassau Coliseum in April of 1980. And it's the last song with the original bassist, Tommy, who died in a car crash a couple weeks later. So it's the last original recording of the original Marshall Tucker Band doing Fire on the Mountain, 1980 Live in Nassau Coliseum. MTB, Marshall Tucker Band. <laughs> 